Hey guys, I'm Tom Tech Chap, and this is by far the most fun I've had making a video in a long time. Oh, headshot. <laughs> I've been testing the new Insta360 GO 3, the latest iteration of the world's smallest action camera, and versus last year's GO 2, it shoots high resolution, we get better image quality and colors, the GO 3's battery lasts up to three times longer, 45 minutes by itself and 170 minutes in the action pod, and when you mount it in this very nifty new and improved action pod, you can shoot up to three hours. And another big upgrade is thanks to the improved heat dissipation, there are no limits on the max video length. You can keep shooting until you fill the internal storage, which is either 32, 64 or 128 gigs, or until the battery runs out. So here's the pitch. It's a tiny camera about the size of your thumb with a magnetic mounting design and together with the bundled accessories and maybe even a bit of your own ingenuity, you can put this thing anywhere. Places that regular full-size action cameras simply wouldn't fit. For example, most cameras can be mounted on top of an RC car, we've all seen that before, but what about on the inside for the driver's POV? Normally you can't do this, but the GO3 is so small it fits inside the RC car's cabin, and the flow state stabilization together with the 360 horizon lock, which is available in some of the modes, do a great job at smoothing out the bumpy ride. I mean, you can see how much the car is shaking as I drive over this dirt track, but the video, buttery smooth. But when you are this small, you have to watch out for things that might want to eat you. So I've teamed up with Insta360 for this video to show you what the GO3 is capable of and why you might want to add one to your camera arsenal. I think that's a pretty good test. So before we dive in properly, let me unbox this for you, see what comes bundled, and then I'll show you how to use it. Ironically, Think Big is the slogan of this tiny, tiny action camera. It really is small. No screen, just the camera lens, two buttons on the front, and the magnetic mounting strip on the back, which, like the action pod, also now has these more secure clasps. In the box, we have a quick start guide, which is worth having a quick peruse through if this is your first playthrough. And then we have the various mounts, including this little clip-on, which I found great for putting on the brim of a cap. And then one of my favorites, this magnetic pendant that you wear with a retractable cord, and also this rubbery angle adjustment insert that pops on the back. Then we have the main action pod, which gives you a more traditional action camera experience. And then finally, this pivot stand, which has an adhesive on the base you can stick to pretty much anything, and can also be unscrewed, revealing a screw mount, which you can attach to a tripod, which you can also get from Insta360. All in, there are four mounts in the box, including the action pod. To get started, pop the GO3 into the action pod, turn it on, and then download the Insta360 app, which you can get on iPhone or Android, and then simply pair your new device. After a couple of minutes of setup, including a few software updates, you're good to go. Now we're up and running, let's start with where you might want to use this, and also how you might want to use the different mounting options. So you can use this in a whole bunch of different ways. You can just actually use the GO3 itself. You can turn it on and off, press record, take a photo with it, and then you can place it wherever you like. Uh, you can then, of course, mount it on the various mounts. Uh, and then you can also attach it to the Action Pod. Now, this is the biggest redesign versus last year's GO2. And this Action Pod not only charges the camera, but you also get a flip-out screen so you can preview uh, what you're looking at and also control all the settings. And actually, my favorite part is once you take it out, you can actually place this wherever you like because obviously it doesn't have a screen you can put it in the smallest of places but you can live preview the feed on this wherever it is up to five meters or via the insta360 app on your phone i even got some great pov footage of me driving hands-free by mounting the go3 between my teeth i was literally biting onto it and it's so small it actually works pretty well so the GO3 uses a magnetic mounting system, but you can also just attach it to, I don't know, your fridge or your BMX. Although it's this guy I find myself using most of the time. You can attach the GO3 by itself or in the action pod like I have here, and then we have a ball head at the top so you get lots of flexibility. Now the best bit about the GO3 is that you really can just mount it anywhere you want. So I'm gonna mount the GO3 underneath, like so. And you can get some pretty cool shots from places you wouldn't expect. Also, this is definitely 100% me. I did not switch out for my buddy James, who can actually ride a skateboard. That's me, look at me go. So after a little while, the 
adhesive on the bottom will lose its strength, but you can just rinse this with water and it'll become sticky again. This is one of my favorite accessories. It's the magnetic pendant. So you simply wear it like a necklace around you and then this is magnetic, as is the Go 3 obviously, and it simply pops on like so. And to be a little bit more inconspicuous if you want to go in, into town or into a shop or just you know not be that obvious that you're filming, pop it onto the pendant. It's that simple. And then you can just walk around with a camera strapped to your chest, hands free. Great for point of view shots, like if you're driving and you need two hands on the wheel, or maybe if you're doing a bit of gorilla shooting. But when you are recording, it does have a flashing red light. So people can see if they look at it, but it's a bit more subtle. So it's mounted and I could use the action pod to see the live feed, but I'm actually using the Insta360 app here. Ready, James? <laughs> and sometimes it's okay if your tech gets a little bit dirty. It's an action cam. It is worth noting though that both the battery and storage are baked in. You can't swap out the battery or a micro SD card, for example. However, shooting 2.7K 30, I can record just under three hours of footage and battery will last around three hours recording at 10 or about 90 minutes at high resolutions. So right now my battery is running a little bit low on the Go 3, so I'm just gonna pop it in the action pod and keep shooting with it in here while it tops it back up. Now it varies by mode, but you have two aspect ratios, three resolutions and four frame rate options to choose from, and also four field of view options. You've got ultra wide, action view, linear and narrow. And as you can see, there are a lot of modes to play with here, 10 to be exact. Now video is, well, regular video. This lets you shoot in the highest resolution, 2.7K at 30 FPS or 1440p at 50, and you have three levels of flow state stabilization built in. Now I would use this mode for less action heavy shots where I want the highest resolution, or if I don't want to edit the footage afterwards. It's nice and simple. But then we have free frame video, which is kind of hard to say if you have a lisp, but this was previously called pro mode on the Go 2, and I reckon this is the best all rounder and ideal for action, sports, or getting POV shots, <laughs> particularly as it turns on the 360 horizon <laughs> lock, so even in the bumpiest conditions, the horizon stays level, and crucially, it gives you the most flexibility in post. The only downside really is video tops out at 4040p 50, and there is no 2.7K option. <laughs> The best part though is editing all your photos and videos is really easy using the Insta360 app, which you can get on your phone or tablet, or you can download the studio app for Windows and Mac. And you can adjust the flow state stabilization, the field of view, do you want action view, which compensates for the lens distortion, or do you want linear or a custom field of view? And you can also reframe and change the aspect ratios to 16 by nine for YouTube or 916 for socials. You can add filters, trim the footage, there's even a handy AI editing tool, and when you're done, you can export it and it's ready to share. Then we have time-lapse, which is pretty straightforward. Here I am helping Mrs. Tech Chap unload the van after a wedding. She is an incredible florist. And time-lapses are great if the camera is static. If you're moving, then you'll want to use Time Shift, which captures a hyperlapse, and I'm pretty impressed how well it copes in these driving shots. It handles the changing of exposure and also the pretty shaky diesel van I was driving and all the bumps that came with it. Although, as is the case with all action cams really, image quality can suffer in lower light, particularly with noise, so brighter conditions are ideal. Now for my next trick, let's put it in slow motion mode, which gives us 120 frames per second at 1080p. Then we have loop recordings, which record continuously, and then when you press the record button, it saves the last segment between one and 30 minutes. Star Labs gives you a long exposure using multiple photos for a cool star trail effect. Then there's interval, which is another kind of time lapse, but it takes a photo at preset intervals between three seconds and two minutes and then stitches it together. And then we have the two photo modes, with HDR photo, as it says on the tin, taking a photo with a wider dynamic range. And once you import a photo into the studio app, it'll automatically optimize it for you. So lots of modes, lots of fun ways to use this, and on the whole, I'm very impressed with the design, the accessories, the picture quality, the stabilization, and even the app and the studio editor are all really easy to use. However, there are a couple of limitations worth mentioning. Firstly, the fact that it can't shoot 60 FPS is a bit frustrating. I mean, 50 is fairly common in European PAL video standards, but for most people, including myself, we want to shoot at 60 on an action cam. And also the new 2.7K resolution is only available in the standard video mode and also only at 30 FPS. 
Not being able to swap out the battery or the storage is a bit of a limitation, especially for longer shoots. Also, while the Go 3 itself is water resistant to five meters or 16 feet, so you can take it in the shower or in the pool with you, the Action Pod is only IPX4 splash resistant. So yes, there are some limitations, but for a tiny, versatile, and infinitely fun action camera, the Insta360 GO 3 is definitely worth a look at, and I'll leave a link in the description if you want to check it out. Any questions? Leave a comment below, and also let me know what you make of this. Thank you so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, a like and subscribe would be amazing, and I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.